Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Good Friday service. Today, of course, is a very solemn day, and that's why we have the church decked in black. But we want this to be a very meaningful service. Today, we're doing it a little differently. We're going to be using some art from this book, The Footsteps of Christ, uh, which follows the Stations of the Cross. And these have been painted by the Benedictine nuns of Turvey Abbey. And we have special copyright permission to use them in our worship. And to back those beautiful images, my friend Julie Price has written original music that will go with each of the slides. So we hope that through these, through our scripture and our hymns, that this will be a very significant way for you to join in our Good Friday. Today is a holy and sacred day. It's a day when we will follow the final hours of Jesus' life. As we hear again how Jesus was accused, beaten, betrayed and crucified. And so we will be invited again to die to ourselves today, just as Christ lays down his own life. I invite you to a responsive prayer, and you'll see on the screen uh, some words to respond, and this is based on Psalm 22. On this day of sadness, as we focus on your death on a cross, come near to us, O God. As we witness Jesus' trial, rejection, degradation, physical pain and the flight of his friends. Come near to us, O God. As evil has its way with Jesus and appears to distinguish, extinguish the great light, come near to us, O God. As we identify with the feeling of being forsaken and remember when scorn and hatred has consumed us, come near to us, O God. As we feel vulnerable and afraid, in a frightening world full of floods and earthquakes, hunger, cruelty, sickness and death, come near to us, O oh God. And as we remember our own sin, our shame, our despair, our regret and our brokenness, come near to us, O oh God, as we come near to you. Amen. I invite you to sing with us. You like, might, may like to stand as we sing When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. John 16, 32, all are to be scattered, leaving me alone. The colours suggest a glow of fire somewhere, in the high priest's courtyard where Peter sits warming himself. The cock is crowing, large, red, fierce, 
and raucous. All Jesus' friends have deserted him. Threatening fists, accusing fingers are his only reward for his life of healing and teaching. And yet he says, I am not alone because the Father is with me. For our sake, God made the sinless one into sin so that in him we might become the goodness of God. We remember today the innocent ones condemned today, victims of war and violence, of earthquake, famine and fire. We remember the unborn and those we condemn by word or deed and even by our silence, our own sisters and brothers of every race and creed. Lord, we pray for all who are treated unjustly. Jesus takes up his cross. He seems to welcome it, yet all the horrors of the passion come swooping down on him at this moment. He stands straight and ready. It was for this very reason that I came to this hour, he said. Father, glorify your name. Jesus lays down his life for the glory of that name so that we might live and give glory to God. In the stream of suffering, engulfing him is also the strength and love of God. Jesus embraces the cross. God embraces him. If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself, take up his cross and follow me. But how do we accept the cross in our lives? Ill health, loneliness, failure or fear, do we embrace them as Jesus did? And how do we respond to the suffering in our world, to major tragedies? Do we unite with the victims in our prayer, placing them in the presence of God? Lord, we pray for the strength to bear our cross, knowing that it is your cross we are carrying. Jesus falls the first time. Ours were the sufferings he bore, ours the sorrow he carried. He was not carrying that one and only cross. He was weighed down, crushed by the crosses of all the world. Whatever we suffer, Jesus is carrying the weight of it. He suffers with us. There is no human suffering in which he is not present to redeem it and to turn it into a seed of resurrection. The thorns refer to Genesis 3.17. Accursed be the soil because of you, it shall yield you brambles and thistles. Jesus came face to face with the curse of paradise. Your sins are forgiven, get up and walk. Thus says Jesus, when we fall over and over again, through the frailty of our human condition. Are we aware of our weaknesses? 
do we pray regularly for strength to overcome them? We remember those evil regimes and institutions and the individuals manipulated by them. Help all those involved to see the error of their ways. Lord, when we fall, help us to rise and walk once more with you. Jesus meets his mother. This station shows an obvious relief from the previous one. Mary's nearness breaks through the nightmare with light and love, and the colours reflect this. Mary was the one who was most able to help and strengthen him, while as Luke says, the sword pierced her own soul. It is the sword in Mary's heart that now unites mother and son, comforting each other. Only when we know suffering ourselves can we comfort others. What are Mary's thoughts as she is reunited with her suffering son? Does she not experience and share the pain of all mothers whose children suffer through illness, whose children are missing? whose children are parted from them through national disasters? Does she not share also the pain of children who perhaps through a misunderstanding or a desire to be free of parental control are cut off from their loved ones? Lord, we pray that as on the way to the cross you brought Mary and her son together, all families may be united once again in a bond of love. loving and powerful God, we witness today your vulnerability and your embracing of the cross as the means to life. We thank you for the assurance that your love is stronger than anything else in heaven or earth, stronger than evil, than, than all human powers, than sorrow and suffering and even death itself. We give thanks that you have conquered death and its sting. And we thank you that in our world of so much pain and sorrow, you have shown that hope and faith is not in vain. Your purpose is always at work, giving meaning to our seeking and our striving after good. So God, forgive us when we lose sight of these truths. Often we are quick to become disheartened and we so easily forget all that you've done for us. Forgive us for the limits we set upon your love Forgive the feeblenesses of our response. Forgive the smallness of our vision. God, speak to us in this season 
and fill us with greater trust and deeper faith. Amen. Simon of Cyrene. Just as the good thief was given to understand the secret of the kingdom of Jesus, why should not Simon of Cyrene have been given a glimpse of the kingdom, piercing through his annoyance at having to carry a criminal's cross by the very act of doing so? Jesus' head is inclined towards Simon's. Simon seems to be listening. There is communication. Jesus is revealing to him the secret of the kingdom, the universal call of the human race to carry each other's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. The background figures in this picture illustrate this, here and in the next station. In so far as you did it to the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Simon helps Jesus unwillingly to carry the cross, but nevertheless, he does help. Do we allow others to help us in times of great difficulty? By such an action, we evoke the Christian virtues of mercy and compassion. Do we go out of our way to help others in time of need? Lord, Help us to extend help willingly to our brothers and sisters when their burdens have become too heavy to carry. The women of Jerusalem, Luke 23, 31 says, If men use the green wood like this, what will happen when it is dry? Jesus is the green wood. He has crossed the tree of life from which we all draw fruitfulness. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, with me, in him, bears fruit in plenty. The cross is represented here as bursting with life and the women too are life bearers through the suffering. Jesus wept. We recall how Jesus shed tears at the death of his friend Lazarus. Most people at some time of their lives are reduced to tears. May our tears be not shed in self-pity. May we in such moments rather weep for the sadness and tragedy of another person's life. Lord, we pray that when darkness engulfs us, your light will guide us to extend a helping hand to another in distress. Jesus is stripped, grabbing hands, stripping him of everything, 
Jesus let them. He emptied himself. In this picture, hands grab even at the radiance around his head. They could not strip him of his divinity. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we shall come to him and make our home with him. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world is prepared for sacrifice. His clothing is torn away from his body. Love is revealed in its starkest form. May we strip ourselves of all attachment to the things of this world in order that our crucified and risen Lord may dwell fully in us. Lord, we pray that having emptied ourselves of all that separates us from you, the love of God may be revealed in us as it was in our brother Jesus. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Jesus said, just destroy this sanctuary and in three days I will raise it up. In this picture, the background shows the temple, which also stands for a city on the point of being bombed, as Jesus' body is on the point of being destroyed by the nails. Jesus suffers in the agonies of the human race until the end of time. From that day, they were determined to kill him. The body of Jesus, the Son of God, is now secured to the instrument of torture and people's inhumanity to one another is revealed. But are things any different today? We reflect on the destruction and persecution of one race by another and on the violence of crime today. And let us never forget our own failure to love our neighbour as Jesus taught us. Lord, we pray for all those in our world today whose intention is the destruction of another.
Jesus speaks to his mother. Like Station 4, this is an intermezzo of love and peace, a moment of warmth and communication. Though full of pain and distress, the focus here is not on the pierced hands and feet, nor on the bombed city and temple, but on the loving concern of three people. Mary, carrying the sword in her heart, knows that God is love, and so does John. A lasting relationship is established between Mary and John, soon to be filled with the presence of the risen Jesus. John took her into his home. Woman, this is your son, this is your mother. These words are the words of a dying man, no thought for himself, but for the two broken-hearted people who stood by the cross, his mother Mary and the disciple John, who were very dear to him. By these words, he commends his mother not only to John, but to us all. We think of those who are spending their lives alone and in hospitals and homes for the elderly. Lord, we pray for a greater concern for the well-being of the elderly in our society, especially those with no one to care for them. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus dies on the cross. Darkness is closing in. Confusion, chaos, despair. The background of this picture shows the bombed out city, the temple of Jesus' body throughout the ages, the figures of the women standing by him, the soldiers and the people having watched the execution. They turn and walk away, satisfied, Indifferent? Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Before the mystery of the death of our Lord Jesus on the cross, we fall silent. Only adoration remains. We know that whatever suffering we have to undergo in this wor world, we are held in the hands of God. His cross is ours. Lord God, our Father, we thank you.
oh God, all our sin, all our hatred, all our violence, all our apathy, all our convenient neglect came together in that dark hour when they snuffed out the light of your goodness, when they crucified your Son, our Lord. God, God we, we remember. remember. O oh God, all your love, all your compassion, all your goodness, all your forgiveness came together in that life and that dying, your undying and unending love when they crucified you, Son, our Lord. God, God we, we remember. remember. O oh God, all of his story, all of human history, all our story repeats itself where hate meets love, where injustice meets justice, where despair meets hope, death meets life. And we dare to believe that this is none other than the way also to truth and life. God, we remember. Amen. Amen. and darkness envelop Calvary. Joseph of Arimathea did a courageous thing asking for the body of Jesus. He risked being identified as one of his friends, an accusation which had caused Peter's fall. He did not know about the resurrection, but unwittingly provided the scene for the events of Easter. This was the Son of God. Thus said one of his executioners. Thus said his disciples on the Sea of Galilee when Jesus calmed the waters, a profession of faith. We should all have these words on our lips. Jesus is taken down from the cross. Mary must have been there and the women who followed Jesus. Mary shares the thoughts of all who hold close to them, a loved one who has died. Lord, take all whom you have called from this world into your eternal light, your life and your peace. Jesus is buried, deeper darkness still, but in the deepest shadow of death there is a glimmer of the hope of new life, symbolised by the seedling. Jesus had said, I tell you most solemnly, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain, but if it dies it yields a rich harvest. Easter expectation begins to shine through the Good Friday sadness. At the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and they laid Jesus there. The torment and agony of the crucifixion is over, and Jesus is laid to rest. He is at peace 
but his spirit rises and many of those who have fallen asleep are awakened. Lord, we pray that we may face death with the certain knowledge that we will live forever with you in Christ. in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but he did not, they did not receive him. of darkness, God of the tomb, God of dark days and of great loss, be with us now as we wait with Jesus. Amen.